Joining us in the studio tonight is the Chief Operating Officer of the International Premier Tennis League, Mr. Eric Goscheik, to tell us more about this upcoming tennis friendly that will be held at the Mall of Asia Arena. Good evening, Eric, and welcome to Manila and welcome to Sports Desk. Thank you very much. Good evening to you. All right, well, you know, this, this tournament is, is new definitely to the Philippines. We've never had this much tennis star power in the country. But before that, tell us how everything started from the very beginning and how you put up this, this league. Well, the, the driving force behind it is Mahesh Bhupati, uh, who just retired from the professional tour. So he's a 12-time Grand Slam winner. He was on the council of the ATP. So he conceptualized this league, this idea, because he wanted to revamp a little bit the traditional tennis formats. And so he came up with this league uh, where different teams with featuring the best players in the world compete against each other in different, in different cities. So that has never really been happened. Mm -hmm. you know, there's team tennis in the US. Uh, there are local tennis leagues in different countries. But never has there been a tennis league where, well, first of all, that you gather all the best players in the world and then that countries um, play against each other. It's fascinating that uh, uh, the, the, the IPTL, when we went through, the, when Gino and I went through the rules, fascinating that uh, this league tries to veer away from the traditions of tennis. You know, the, the, the no time limit, now you have like a, like a shot clock and, and all these other innovations that you want to introduce. Why is it important to, you know, sort of shift to a newer brand of tennis? We, we call it, we're trying to bring NBA-style entertainment NBA into tennis. Style. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, we will feature a DJ, we will have cheerleaders, we will have timeouts, and uh, nobody is asking you to turn off your mobile phone. So we're trying to bring in new fans to the game yeah. uh, while we're still competing. I mean, don't forget, it's, it's a competition. There's a million dollars in prize money. Otherwise, the best players would not compete. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really, I, we, we feel like that there's innovation needed in tennis. So, okay, so you said people don't have to turn off their mobile phones. So you, we won't hear this throughout the tournament. Quiet, please. I hope not. No, really. <laughs> <laughs> so people can be cheering and we won't hear any of that? Or how, how does that work? No, we want to have this. I mean, if you see the, the biggest team competition is Davis Cup. Yeah, and yeah. how the fans get behind their players and their teams. That's the atmosphere we want to create. Mm -hmm. So when they're doing the natural breaks, you, know, you will hear the music. Um, the league is very much... Uh, uh, modeled after the IPL in cricket, where you have all this entertainment going on while people are still watching serious sports. And that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah. How were the players chosen for, to represent the cities and the countries that they're going to be uh, playing for? Yeah. Well, we have, we have uh, offered four franchise licenses. And the owners of these licenses of the teams, they uh, drafted their players. So we had an initial list of 80 players uh, who committed to play the league. And then the owners uh, were given a maximum budget to spend on players. And based on that, they had to choose. So every team has to have at least one legend player. Uh, every team has to have at least two women's players. And you need to have one doubles player. So you need to have two men singles players. Okay. So that was the limitations. Um, with these limitations and the budgets, the owners had a chance to draft up to 10 players uh, from the list of 80. And who was the first pick overall? over everybody? Uh, Rafael Nadal at that time. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's, he's, he's not very healthy. I'm, I'm happy to see him play in China right now, mm -hmm. but uh, he had to pull out uh, about a week ago, saying that, that he really needs to recover from, from all of his injuries during the off-season. And then we were very fortunate to get Roger, uh, yes. Roger Federer in, in his place. No? But uh, Rafael was the overall favorite, yes. Okay. And the Philippines also had a pretty interesting some, uh, selections for the uh, Manila team. Uh, Maria Sharapova, one of them. Uh, where was she when, when as far as uh, choosing players uh, to join the joint team Philippines or Team Manila? Well, initially, Maria didn't want to play. She had a very busy schedule, uh, and she was a little bit uh, skeptical if she can make the commitment uh, when we first drafted the league. So the first player was uh, Victoria Azarenka, okay. and she unfortunately we saw that she's also injured. Uh, she has finished the season, so she cannot play right now. And uh, at that time, Maria was, was able to commit. And uh, I mean, she's extremely excited. She's never been to the Philippines. Um, and uh, when you see her social media sites uh, on, on her Facebook and her Twitter, I mean, she's all excited about coming to the Philippines. Yeah, a lot of uh, uh, Filipino tennis fans you can't wait for, for this event to happen. But at the same time, they're also wondering, like, how much access can they have to these tennis super, superstars that are coming over? Yes. 
mean, of course, you have to be a little bit protective. Mm -hmm. huh? I mean, we're in a time where everybody likes to take a selfie and everybody That's wants right. to be close <laughs> to right. the players. Um, and uh, we're bringing some of the top, ta the top stars over here. At the same time, we are the creator of the format, so we will make sure that, that access to the players is, is there. So people who are coming in to see the matches, we will have meets and greets, we will have photo opportunities, uh, we have a gala dinner, we do a tennis clinic, and then uh, you know, the, the, the players will be available for community activities. You've just been invited by the stock market to ring the bell on the 27th. So nice. there, are, there are opportunities for the players to be in the community and to do different things. So basically, this is going to be like not just the, the, the matches in, during the weekend, but it's in extension. There's going to be some side events as well uh, from Friday to all the way to the following, the early following week. Correct. So what, uh, I mean, one of the objectives was to bring tennis in, in regions in Asia where the top stars have not been exposed. Mm -hmm. So if you only bring them in here for three days to play some matches, that would be very limiting to our objectives. So we want to make sure that for the five days the players are in town, we're going to maximize the exposure to the public while then in the afternoons and the evenings they're still playing for their teams. Okay, well, please invite everybody to come down to the Mall of Asia Arena. Uh, this, is, this is big. This is the biggest uh, thing that's ever happened in the sport of tennis in the Philippines. So please invite everybody yes. to come down and support. No. Well, thank you very much for giving us a chance to bring the IPTL to Manila. And we hope that everybody goes out and uh, sees in the Mall of Asia the top stars in the world competing from the 28th to the 30th of November. So come out and uh, give a big hand and uh, welcome to Andy Murray, Maria Sharapova, uh, Tred Huey and so on and so on to, to go for the Manila Mavericks. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll Thank see you, you there, much. right? We'll be, we'll be covering from yes, the uh, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thanks right. a lot.